All right, so uh, can you tell me about who you are and what you do for Hamilton Families? Sure. My name is Tammy Gaines and I am a manager in the real estate department. Um, I've been with Hamilton Families for six years. I started my career off here at the shelter as a case manager. Um, spent maybe a year and a half there. Um, was promoted to intake navigation uh, coordinator, which is a supervisor role. Um, and then from there, um, stayed there for a couple of years and then came into um, the real estate uh, department. And I've been here for um, three and a half, almost four years in this department. So yeah, that's been my journey with Hamilton so far. Um, and I love it. That's amazing. I, I had an opportunity to have a conversation earlier with Mayo, and she was able to kind of explain to me how the real estate department even came to be, because I had no idea that organizations like Hamilton Families had. It makes absolute sense that you would have some, not just someone, but a team connected to real estate. But as, as like an everyday person, I had no grasp of concept over that. Um, and so can you tell me more about the work that you all do uh, firsthand uh, to help the participants? Oh my goodness. I mean, I mean, thank you for asking. Um, the real estate team um, is made up of seven, um, correction, 11 uh, staff members, Mayo, our director. Um, we have uh, three managers, um, myself and two others, and we have a team of specialists and there's seven of those. And I'd say out of our team of 11, we have, I'd say probably 30 years of real estate experience um, behind our team. So we have um, a, leading, a lead inspector who's been doing this for you know, 25, 30 years. Um, all of our team are H HQS certified, which is a certification that you need um, to do like HUD housing and um, that type of good stuff. And it's like what Section 8 uses when they are doing the inspections for their homes. So everyone um, is, is certified in that. Um, you know, we have real, uh, licensed realtors on our teams. We have brokers on our team. Um, you know, we have tenant uh, rights activists on our team just a little bit of everything. And so it makes us a, real, a really, really uh, well-rounded team. Um, you know, I came from a property management background before I came um, to this department. So I, I had some experience in property management. Um, you know, so like I said, our team comes with a little bit of everything. And with, with that being said, it, it helps us to be able to understand you know, the market and what it is that um, that we can do to service our families. Um, we know the areas, um, you know, the good areas, you know, the more challenging areas. We know what to look for when it comes to housing for our families. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it really helps us out a lot. Yeah, it's so interesting having, uh, hearing exactly what you just said and after speaking with Mayo, it it is so apparent that you all work to find not just shelter, but homes for people, you know, just yes. having you list the experience yes. base of your team makes it like super mm -hmm. apparent that you're like, we're not just trying to get people with a roof over their head. We're like, how can they sustain? Oh, no. I mean, Christopher, we work with private investors. Um, we work with property management companies. We work with private owners. Um, you know, we work with people that are just trying to help a friend rent out a property. And you know what is so nice about it, um, Christopher, is um, we have a large uh, clientele of landlords that are African-American. And that is sweet. You know what I'm saying? To, mm -hmm. to, to work with our families at the capacity that we do and to, you know, to see a, a young African-American American male or female come into our program needing services because they're homeless you know, <clears throat> excuse me, their case manager is African-American. You know what I'm saying? The, the people that they're working with in the real estate department are African-American and the landlords that are servicing them are African-American. It kind of helps ease some of that because it's like, wow, people that look just like me are helping me, mm -hmm. you know? And sometimes it helps them, um, you know, help someone else because, you know, or they get to see some some light at the end of the tunnel. So. You know, to me, it's just a good feeling. Absolutely, and I'm, I, I mentioned earlier in a, in in a conversation with Mayo that I 
am struck by the memory of when I was younger and wanted to get into theater. At first I was like, this is absolutely crazy because I didn't see anyone who looked like me. <laughs> and it was right. when I saw someone who looked like me that it didn't seem crazy. And I imagine for right. the participants, there might be a level of that when you see case managers and property managers and real estate brokers that are all like your skin tone and who also exactly. more importantly speaking listening to you and Mayo speak see you as human and treat you that way and that seems to right. be more of what you all do it's like i'm not just talking at a, at a at a body and pretending they're a wall you all seem to really look at people as people and treat them with respect and dignity most definitely and i'd have to say um that, you know, like when I was a case manager, you know, I'm dealing with families that have had, you know, generational homelessness, you know, um, they, you know, they are um, struggling from addiction and, you know, and mental health and stuff like that. And what was so nice is because not only was I working at the shelter, was I an African American female um, that looked like them, but I also lived in the community. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when I'd be on my way from to the shelter, you know, or back home, you know, they'd see me in the community, you know, hey, queen, hey, queen, you know, refer to me like that. And, you know, and it allowed them to to know that I'm just like them. You know what I'm saying? I'm just one paycheck away from being homeless myself. You know what I mean? And they don't understand that. So the only thing that I could do as a Black woman working with people of color is to kind of, you know, empower them and encourage them and inspire them, you know, because to me that was really, really important that they had that. Yeah, and, it's, and so tell me more about what it is like as a black woman working with the team that you're working with. I mean, I imagine, I, I would like to imagine that because of the diversity, there, there's strength in that, right? And because you're a team led by a black woman, that there is, I'm, I'm sure we're human, so I'm sure there are challenges, but I just imagine the strength that you all have together as a team. Can you tell me more about what that is? Oh my goodness. Um, we have a really, really close team. I mean, we have one of the smallest teams here in the um, in the organization. Um, but you know, there's a there's a lot of trust between us. There, there is a lot of um, assurance in knowing that the other person um, can have your back at a drop of a dime because they have the same experience level that you do. Um, it's that experience and that wealth of knowledge and and that, that just freely flows within our department, you know? So if you're new or if you don't know something, you know, you don't have that person that's the hoarder of all of the, the information and they, they know everything. We're pretty much all at the same level, which makes it really, really nice. I mean, just the amount of respect that we have for each other as a team um, and all coming from different backgrounds, we're all different ages. Um, I mean, our age range in our department ranges from like 25, all the way up to uh, mid seventies, you know what I mean? So we have a, a, a really broad age range in our department, but yet there's so much love and, and just so much collaboration between, uh, between our team of 11 and just, I mean, everyone has each other's back and it, it just, it makes it really, really nice. It's- Yeah, and I'm it, sure it that makes it, um that allows you all to do exactly what you're there to do, which is serve your participants and and I don't know how closely you work individually with participants, but can you? We don't work with participants at all. In in the real estate department, we don't work with participants at all. Mm. Um, you know, there is an occasional time that we may have um, a contract, like an outside contract, where we will where we will be working with participants. Mm -hmm. But within Hamilton family participants that are referred to us, we don't work with them directly. They work with. Um, a navigation team. So in the real estate department, we work primarily with the landlords, the investors, the property management companies. That's what our role is here. Wonderful. Thank you for, 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 for telling me that because I wanted to ask, like, how does the, I, and I guess the better way to phrase this is, how does the result of the work you do on the people that you're working for, the participants, how does that affect you or make you work more? Or how, how, what's, because I, I guess it would be, you hear about it afterwards, you know, you hear about how they are settling into the home and things like that. How does that add to the work that you do? Well, the team that I manage, um, they are called the ITR to Keys team. Mm -hmm. And so an ITR is an intense. So once um, my team finds a, a housing unit um, with someone that's willing to work with one of our participants, 
um, navigations participant is willing to rent something that we have in our database, um, those two are merged together. And so my team works the ITR from beginning to end. So now we work with the landlord um, for from the real estate um, side of it to get the inspection completed, mm -hmm. um, schedule the, the unit viewing so we can make sure that the unit is habitable, that it's, you know, that it's something that the participant is looking for. Um, where navigation on their end, they may meet us at the unit to show the participant, but they're responsible for like the money end of it and making sure that the participant can afford the unit. Our end of it is making sure that the unit is everything that the family needs. And so now it's the day of the move-in. Our team will meet with navigation and the family at the move-in and, you know, do all of the paperwork and get keys and all of that lovely stuff and that celebration. So we very, very closely with navigation. We can't do it without them and they can't do it without us. It is totally a team effort. Oh yeah, it sounds like it. And you know, Tammy, I I am always struck. I think in life, it's something that I think about a lot just because it motivates me. But as I've been speaking with you all at Hamilton Families, I'm reminded of what I believe is true about our Black culture in that mm -hmm. The, the power in numbers, the power in community. And I believe that's part of our legacy as Black people. It was passed down to us and we continue to move it forward. So I wanted to ask you, what do you hope in 30 years, in five years, is the legacy of Hamilton families on, on Black culture, on Black families? Um, that's a really, really good question. Um, that legacy of Hamilton families of approaching, you know, being in service for, you know, almost 35 years, I would like to say in 35 more years that they are still servicing the community. And not only that, that they've expanded to different cities and maybe different states, you know what I mean? Um, that's what my hope for Hamilton family is. I think that what I would really like to see internally when it comes to working with the families is that there's more education around the staff that work directly with the families. Mm. Um, so that way they can educate the families. So educate the families on how to properly take care of their home and, you know, why you get a 30 day notice and, you know, why, you know, you can't be fighting with your boyfriend in your unit, you know, and why it's important that you pay your rent on time, you know, just educating the staff so they can properly educate the families. And I think that that could help with some of the homelessness or the repetitive homelessness. Mm -hmm. You know, a family goes through our 12 month program and then they go out and then they go back through the system and they recycle back in through a um, through another funding source. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So just things like that where they stay, where they stabilize and they thrive in their, in, you know, um, and, and remain in their units and not just that once a year turnaround. Yeah. So that's my ultimate goal is. I love that. I love, and I, and I, in listening to you speak about your hopes, I'm also struck with the idea of like how, as Black people, historically, we haven't had the allyship in numbers that seems to be the newer version of it now. And what what would you say to other people who are like, I, I want to help support, I want to step off center and be an ally to this cause. What would you say to support them, to help them? What would you say to those people? Oh my goodness, I would be completely transparent with them so they know exactly what it is um, that they'd be supporting and why it's so important that they do um, support, you know. Um, a lot of people don't know when they come to volunteer with Hamilton families um, how critical it is. They spend a whole day with our families like at an event or at a carnival or during Christmas time or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then they spend that day there. And then you hear all of these beautiful, amazing stories where people are crying and they're like, I had no idea, you know, how I could have impacted and how I could have been helping for years and I'm doing this for the rest of my life. And, you know, those are like amazing stories when you hear those testimonies from, um, from people that volunteer with us. Um, you know, like I said, so it would just be educating the people that are going to be supporting us and doing more of that, you know, putting our name out there because, I mean, I live in San Francisco. And there's so many people that don't even know anything about Hamilton families. When they ask me where I work at, they're like, Hamilton families, I've never heard of that. You know, they've heard of other organizations, but Hamilton, they've never heard of us. You know, that says a lot that we're in this city where we primarily house families and it 
it's such a, a large community that people aren't aware, you know, if it's our logo or the name or, or what, but yeah, a lot of people have not heard about us. And that's why I'm so excited to be able to like lend or support this this um with this platform because i myself didn't know about it until my husband started working for hamilton families and the information that i've been able to get and how simple it is to be a part of the support you know i may not have all the money in the world but there are actions that i can do there there's information i can pass along absolutely and i wanted to ask you as well um i have this question and one other question but i wanted to ask you what sets Hamilton families apart from similar organizations? I know everyone's working towards similar goals. I got you on that one right yes. there. Um, you know, one one of the one of the um, the things about um, I, I love what I do because I'm able to support and house families. Um, my wife houses single adults, so she works at another organization, does the same thing. So there's multiple of them out there. I would have to say what sets us aside from a lot of organizations and, you know, I'm not trying to uh, say that it's not all of Hamilton for one thing or another, but I'd have to say our real estate department. Mm. Our real estate department is amazing. I mean, like I said, the team, um, who we're able to service. I mean, any program within our organization, we're able to service every single program in our organization. We can support the shelter with supporting their families. We can support our transitional housing with our families. Any outside contract, um, you know, we have a big contract with CalWORKs. We can support their CalWORKs families with housing. We've worked with the Housing Authority with, um, with contracts. We've worked with, um, with HSH with contracts. So we can service anybody with our housing. I mean, we are able to pull housing like that. I mean, right now we have probably about 1600 landlords that we work with in our database. And, you know, that's huge. So, um, you know, one of the lovely things about, like, like I love about it is my team does not take no for an answer. I mean, if a landlord says, no, I don't wanna work with you, they're gonna call that landlord back next week and, <laughs> and next year until he says yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I would just have to say that the real estate department is something that a lot of organizations do not have there. I mean, they have the skill level, they may have the properties, but they don't have it and they don't organize it the way that we do. Absolutely. And, and throughout our conversation, you've touched on this, this last question in pretty much every, every answer you've given. And, and, and I think that's important to know. And I really want to leave the people watching this interview with this, but what makes you proud to work with Hamilton families as part of their family? What makes me proud to work for Hamilton families? Um, you know, to be given the opportunity to do what it is that I'm, I'm doing, um, you know, that makes me proud that they chose me. Um, they chose me in so many other capacities, um, you know, throughout the years that I've been here. I'm the voice of Hamilton families. You dial the number, that's me. <laughs> you know, so there's something that they see about me um, so to me, that's, that's just giving back to someone who believes in me, you know, mm -hmm. and just loving what I do and loving the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing, because I'm supporting other people and other people that look just like me that need me, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you again for, you know, sharing this time in your day with me, because I, I have been saying to Corey and mentioning to your colleagues as I've spoken to all of you, and I, I'm sure you know a version of this. I walk through the world every day as a black person and it is very scary and I'm just now you know I turned 30 this past May and after 10 years of decision making as an adult to know that there are other people like yourselves out there who are working to make sure that people who look like me have an opportunity that sometimes society doesn't grant us is so um motivating and and empowering to know that like on the scary days, I can go, there are people out there working to make sure we we do better, we are better, and we have better. So thank you just for the work that you all do and for who you are. I would like to say, um, Christopher, thank you for this opportunity, and it was a pleasure. Thank you. Of course.